Hey guys, you ready to make some money playing games? Well, Aurora is hosting a play to airdrop event worth 60,000 Ori, and that is nearly $20,000. And also they have NFT rewards that you can sell on the marketplace. But guess what? More Ori. So there's a lot of Ori up for grabs. And the great thing is, is it's free to enter because Aurora is a free to play game that you can play on PC or on mobile. So if you like monster battle games, this is something you really want to get into. So let me tell you guys all the details on this massive event so you lot can earn some money. Let's get into it. So to start this video off, let me explain to you guys what Rory is. But if you already played the game, skip on to the next bit, which is me breaking down all the play to airdrop details. If you haven't played Rory before, it's a monster battle game built on the Solana blockchain, which has two different game modes, which is PVE and PVP. And the PVE mode is great for you guys to learn the game get some eggs and build up your team before going into the PvP realm. In the PvE mode, you can clear land by defeating nifties, collecting crystals, and then proceeding to go to higher tiers of lands, and then eventually you're going to come up against a boss, and you've got to defeat it to then complete that land and then go to higher tiers. Then once you get to 10 levels of land, you've completed all the PvE mode. And along the road, you'll defeat nifties, and at the end of the battle, you have a chance to get an egg. And there's two types of eggs you can get, standard and NFTs. And the standard eggs are the way for you guys to build up your team right now to start playing the game. And once you've explored the PvE mode and learned the battle system, which takes a little while to learn because you can do three different moves in one turn. And once you've slowly learned the nifties, then you can go to PvP, which is the main earning system within the game. When it comes to PvP in a Rory, there's so many details which I'm not going to go into such as the differences between the standard and prime nifties. But in short, after a battle, you will either earn Toke or Ochre. And on Wednesday, these tokens will turn into Ori. Because Aurora is a forever evolving game, this is just the way how the game is right now. Because in the future, the PvE mode is going to be expanding so much more. And while it expands, the PvP mode will get so much better in the future. Well, that's Aurora in short. We have so many videos on this channel about the game that if you need any more details, you can find it there. So now it's time to get into the reason you clicked on this video. All the details about Rory's play to airdrop event. So now it's time to get into all the details about Rory's massive play to airdrop event. So I've already told you guys about the 65,000 Ori prize pool. But there's a bunch of other rewards you can get, such as NFT eggs, collectibles, and a bunch of other things. But they're all tied up into bounty system and you've got two different bounty systems you've got your personal one and you've got your group one later in the video we're going to go into the rewards you get for completing both of these bounties but in short the personal bounty system is the one that you can complete yourself by playing in the airdrop but the group one it comes down to all the players in the event completing tasks for you to eventually unlock different rewards but to clear each one of these bounties and to also be a part of that 65,000 Ori prize pool you have to do different tasks within the game and each one of them needs a different task. So the personal bounty system, you need to collect candies which you can get from walking around and by defeating bosses. The group bounty system comes down to each player within the game defeating a Hollywood in the event. But each time you defeat either one of the bosses, you'll be rewarded Toke. And this Toke is your way of getting a percentage of that massive 65,000 Ori prize pool. So once you guys have completed your personal bounty system and the group has completed the group bounty system, you guys should definitely focus on defeating as many bosses as you can. So the more Toke you get, the more Ori you will get at the end of the event. But if you guys decide you need a little break from the PvE event and defeating bosses, if you do decide to play PvP, the team has doubled the weekly Ori we get. So if you play PvP this week, you will get more rewards on Wednesday. Lastly, before we get into all the rewards for the event, let me tell you guys all the information we know so far about these two bosses. First off, we've got Goliath. And don't worry, we're going to tell you guys the best nifties to use during this event. But Goliath is a fire nifty, which means he's weak to water. And we've got Hollywood, which is a plant nifty. That means it's going to be weak to them fire nifties. So now you know the type-ins. Let me tell you guys the rewards and then at the end of the video, the best nifties to use to gain points and later, more Ori. So let me break down all the rewards you can get during the event because I know you guys want to make sure you can earn as much as you can while you're playing. So we said it a million times, 
There's a massive Ori prize pool that you're all fighting out for. And the way to get it is by defeating bosses and gaining tote. And the more tote you get, the more Ori you will get. But while you're defeating them Hollywood, if you're super lucky and you get an NFT egg, these are event NFT eggs. And these are super desirable NFTs because they're super limited. So at the beginning of the event, everyone's gonna have them. But in a couple months, people won't. And we have examples of this already with the Bloom egg and the Draco egg. So if you get these eggs, hold on to them because they're gonna be super desirable in the future. That's not financial advice. Next, we got an NFT skin, which you can get from completing your personal bounty. And this NFT skin is super cool. And the great thing is, quit an NFT. If you don't like it yourself, you can put it on the market and sell it for Ori. But if I was you, use it. Next, these three rewards you can get for completing the group bounty system. And they are a collectible, an Aurorian background and an Avatar Cosmetic. And this Avatar Cosmetic is the first one within the game. So to me, I think this is going to be super desirable to some people. Again, not financial advice. And these collectibles are super limited. And there's a feature coming to Aurori soon called Collection Score. And these collectibles are going to be a massive part of that. So right now, you might not think too much of them, but in the future, a lot of people are. And lastly, before we get into the best nifties to use in this event, we have the two Aurorians that the team are giving out randomly. And if you look on the marketplace, these Aurorians are super expensive. And the zombie ones that the team are giving away are some of the rarest ones out. Now you know the rewards. Let me get you guys properly set up for this event. Even though the 29th is a few days away, you guys can get set up in the game right now. So you're all ready for the event. So let me help you out. Starting off, play the PvE mode because you want to get experience with it. Because the team building when it comes to this game is a lot different when it comes to PvE and PvP. Because PvP is a quick short battle, but PvE, there's so much different techniques that you need to implement when it comes to team building, such as sustainability, because you want to go on to multiple lands. So once you clear one, you want to go to the next one. And you can't leave without taking rewards and starting from the beginning again. And the way you're going to sustain yourself is by having nifties that have healing, deflects, counters, ways to like not take any damage. And also you can take free potions on your journey. So you can take healing potions or revive potions. Cause to me, the other potions aren't necessarily needed, but the healing and revive potions are going to be your best friends. Because if you're going to take a nifty that has no healing or shields, these potions are going to be super key to keep that nifty going. And the thing is, there's so much that goes into the team building in Aurora when it comes to the PvE mode. Because there's so many variables you have to like deal with, such as defeating nifties, defeating a boss, and the different type ins you're going to have to come up against. So you want to practice now. I can't tell you in a little two minute time frame how to play the PvE mode. So play it yourself. Get ready because you need to know counters, you need to understand the nifties you're going up against because you're going to be playing this PvE mode constantly during this event. Before you start practicing, let me tell you guys the nifties that I think are going to be really strong during this event. So because we've got two different bosses and they're two different type ins, we kind of have to build our team around that because we've got three spots to fill up. So we kind of want to have one spot for each of the bosses and maybe one nifty to kind of like deal with everything else and kind of give some sustainability to keep us going. So then the other two nifties are just there, fresh, ready to be used against the boss. So when it comes to Halaru, quest of plant nifty, I think fire nifties are going to be really strong. But there's a chance this Halaru could have a hidden water move. So I'm going to recommend some fire nifties, but if this boss has a water move, don't use neither of the nifties that I'm about to recommend. But if it doesn't have a water move, get yourself a number nine or a Shiba. Because number nine does percentage damage and it's 50%. And it also has Scorching Bite, which is one of the best moves within the game. And if you need to get around any of them big moves that the boss has, it also has a counter which gets around any big damage move and hits your opponent. And the great thing about Shiba, he has the same counter ability as number nine, but it also has a buff that increases its attack and it has a fire move that has increased damage if it has lower health than your opponent. So if you buff yourself up and then get a bit lower than your boss, you can hit it with a massive fire move to hopefully kill it. But if Holoru does have a water move, you do want a fire move 
but you don't want to fire nifty. So let's get into the nifties that have fire moves that are going to be really good to get around it. Starting off, we've got Shibark, which allows itself to buff itself up while doing a fire move. And it also has Grimfang that has a curse ability. So it has a whole different package. And it also has a deflect, which allows itself to get around any big moves, but it also takes damage when it does this move. It's not like counters, but its main arsenal is going to be buffing itself up with the fire move to hopefully kill the boss. And if you need that one big hit, you've got a Grimfang with that curse to deal some damage at the end of the game. And we also got Drake Curve, which high move allows itself to get increased attack but it loses its defense, so it's kind of a risky move, but it also has Scorching Bite, which we talked about with number nine, which is a great damage move. So with Drake Curve, you can buff yourself up and hit it hard, but it also has a shield ability that increases its defense. But if you use your height move, you're gonna clear any of the defense buffs that you gained. So be careful when you use Drake Curve. That's why I said Shibark is like, no, Shibark was the first one I recommended because it's gonna be the best one for all situations. And as we go down, it's kind of going to be nifties that are good if you have them, if you don't have them, the one above it. And we also got Unicrin. It has a flamethrower move, which is really good. And it has a cleanse ability that does loads of damage. But its height move does zero damage. But it does buff your defense, which will allow you to live within the game. So now I've told you all the nifties that's going to be good against the Hollow boss. It's going to be one nifty that's going to be good against both these bosses because it has a move that is super overpowered. But before I tell you this nifty, let me tell you all the nifties that's going to be good against Goliath. So, Goliath is a fire nifty, so water moves are your best friend. And in Aurora, a lot of the water moves are priority moves. And priority moves allow you to attack first, no matter what happens, unless you're going up against a deflect. But to me, I'm not expecting Goliath to have a deflect, nor do I expect him to have a grass move. So I feel it's super easy to use water moves against this boss. Starting off, we've got Choco Rex which is a super easy nifty for people to learn because it has a move that gives itself max attack. And you also have a water priority move, which does a lot of damage, especially once you get this buff. But you gotta be careful because this buff is amazing, but its drawback is literally death. So be smart when you use Choco Rex. But you also have Dip King, which is a super easy nifty to use as well because it's Riptide and Deluge are super powerful. And you've got two high damage in water moves that you can do. And on top of that, it's got a cleanse. So if Goliath still has the curse kit that it had normally, having a cleanse is going to be super key. Last water nifty I'm going to recommend is Axo Bubble. Because again, it has a water priority move, but it also has a cleanse. Which again, cleanses are really underrated. And with Goliath, it could be super key. The thing is, the water nifties that I was recommending are super easy to use compared to the fire options for the other boss. But now you know the nifties to use against either boss, let me tell you one nifty that could be super key against both of them. And this nifty is Dino Task. Because it has a move that stacks and it can literally nearly OTK any boss. But the thing is, you have to live enough to be able to stack this curse ability. So it's kind of an all in thing and it's still in testing phase for me. But I think Dino Task could be a sleeper pick for the best nifty to use during this event. So yeah guys, take one nifty from either one of them groups that I recommended, then for your third choice, pick a nifty that's gonna be really good against the nifties that you're fighting on individual land, because each biome has a different set of nifties that you're gonna go up against. So you can plan ahead on the third slot to be kind of like all round for any nifties that you're going up against. So that's it guys. Now you're all prepared to go on a worry journey. You go out there, play some PVE, build up your team and get ready for the 29th when the big event starts. But until then, remember, we are shark in this world, not a whale. I'm gonna catch you guys next time.